Hey everybody, here I am, Dawn Brolin, your designated motivator, and I'm here today to talk to you about the ADP referral program. I love it. Work with ADP your way because no two accounting firms are the same. You can process your own payroll, get rewarded for referrals, hand off payroll entirely to ADP. ADP is so flexible. You want to increase profits? You want to have everything in one place for you? That referral program is the way to go. Go to adp.com slash accountant. You won't be disappointed. All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to another episode of the DM Disruption. And I'm here with one of my very favorite people, one of my mentors. So Karen Schwartz is here with us today. Again, a really dear friend of mine. Uh, we've been on the Trainer Writer Network for four or five years. And Karen just stepped down from that committee. And understandably, we're going to talk a little bit about you know, what has Karen been up to? What does Karen want to see for her life in the future? What has she seen in the past? And we're just going to have a great conversation because Karen's a good, is definitely a favorite of mine. So Karen, and I welcome. love talking with, well, thank you, Don. I love talking with you. You've always got so much energy and um, it's just amazing the things you've done and are doing. So, well, I appreciate that. And really at the end of the day, I like you, we all are trying to do things. We've always been willing to help each other out when people with questions, you know, I've, I've reached out to Karen. Karen does, has done a lot of work with attorneys and accounting and those kind of things. And, and I kind of want to start off talking to you about your parents, to be honest, because, you know, I see that maybe was a little bit of motivation or maybe not, which I think you'll tell us about, but your dad being a CPA and an attorney, which you could tell us about, and then your mom in the bookkeeping field. So you kind of grew up around all this. Yeah. So I kind of joke when I look back at it that um, I guess it was in my genes and I never stood a chance, but <laughs> I worked for IBM for 14 years. And when I left IBM at IBM, you get really, really specialized. Okay. And that doesn't necessarily translate well to the general world. Right. But I had two young children. I had a wonderful nanny who I was not prepared to give up. Right. And so I had to work and mm -hmm. I really couldn't find anything that was a good fit. And so I started, a, so I thought about what do I like to do? What do I know how to do? And I was always very good with numbers. It's in the genes. Yeah. And so I started a bookkeeping service for small businesses. Mm -hmm. And then over time, I evolved into uh, doing more consulting work. And it turned out I was working with law firms. And I liked working with law firms. I guess, you know, I was used to dealing with my dad. And so there I knew go. how to deal with lawyers. <laughs> um, and so it was just comfortable for me. And so I really narrowed down into working with that niche. Right. That's it. And that's interesting because when, you know, we were kind of talking about your dad and the fact that he was an attorney. <laughs> And I know your specialty has always been in the in the law industry and, 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 you know, IOLTA accounts and nightmares like that, that, you know, attorneys don't seem to want to pay attention to. It's kind of funny, but but that you gravitated to that area because maybe of your dad, which is cool. And so what about your mom? Like your mom, you said your mom was in bookkeeping. What was she doing? My mom was in a bookkeeper, but she actually she well, she stopped working. Uh, she always said she stopped working when my father started making more money than she did. Because they got sure. married, she helped to put work while he was going through law school. Sure. But um, but basically, she took care of all the books in the house. She mm -hmm. did all the finances in the house. And I remember her sitting with the big green ledger sheets. Absolutely. And working through the numbers for the personal finances. But then mm -hmm. also, my father's company had moved from New York City up to Rye, New York, about 20 mm -hmm. minutes from where we lived. Yep. Back in the days before, there was lots of traffic on the roads. Oh, my and, goodness. Um, and shortly after they moved, their bookkeeper's mother took ill and she had to go back to Germany to take care of her mother. Mm. And they asked my mom to come in and fill in a little bit. And so for a year, my mother it was supposed to be a couple of months. It ended up being about a year. My mother really was working as the bookkeeper at the at my father's office. Right. And okay. so, you know, I had I knew about her doing that and her working in that area. And then I also um, just being the daughter, a couple of summers, I actually worked in the office, helping out in the in the general office, but doing a lot of it within the bookkeeping area. So okay. I had a lot of exposure to that kind of thing. And how old were you when you were doing that? Well, like that was when school? I was like in high school or college. Okay. Yeah, right. High school yep. or college. That was a bit older. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Makes sense. I mean, you weren't eight years old doing books. No, no. <laughs> 
so that so that and that did that just like spur an interest for you so as you you know what like what it just made it stuck for you and so yeah i think i was just always very comfortable with numbers Mm. and so you know i always balanced my checkbook i remember in college i had a friend who was having trouble with her checkbook reconciliation and so i just sat down and helped her with it so it was something i was always good at Right. So it was and an so, easy, it was an easy, comfortable place to fall back to. And it was something that I enjoyed. I sure. like, it's a little bit of a puzzle, yes. you know, kind of finding and fixing those numbers. And although 100%. I'm terrible at crossword puzzles, I like that. <laughs> Same with me. Like, don't bring me to a trivia night, right? I do go, I contribute nothing. Like, and <laughs> I just can't contribute anything to, to those types of things. But you want me to, like you said, reconcile a checkbook, all day right. long love it um and so then you like you said you had the kids and you were like you want to keep your nanny which i can appreciate that and so how did you get your first client you know i started looking at accountants in my area mm-hmm. and i sent out a lot of letters and followed up with some phone calls and i got one attorney in westport a woman named sonia who basically took a chance with me Sure. and passed a couple of clients on to me and i was able to you know work with her and help them and that really evolved and then she continued you know giving me some business and i yep. was able to expand out from there and pick up new clients that's so fun it's uh, so i think back we we have such similar we're similar stories certainly not the same but i knew at 16 i wanted to be an accountant But remembering that first client, like for me, like you said, Sonia took a chance on you. I have a guy who was building the in-law apartment for my parents and he was my, uh, worked for my dad at Pratt Whitney when my dad worked there. And he was like, Hey, you have an accounting degree. You want to do my books? And I was like, sure, I could probably figure it out. I think. Right. And it was just, he took, kind of took that chance on me too and immediately fell in love with it. And he had those, the one right system. So he wrote the checks out and, you know, all the, the yeah. brown one right sheets is what he and the brown ones. But anyway, but it's just so funny how you like just I think that marketing still works. Like you said, you brought, sent out letters and stuff to local accountants. And I try to tell people they're like, how do you market yourself? And I'm like, well, you know, like you said, I reach out to t- tax attorneys, i.e. Eric Green. You know, I reach out to those kind of people and say, hey, listen, if there's a gap you can't fill or you're looking for somebody to help out with, you know, filling out the 433 or gathering the documents or whatever, I'm your girl. And that's how I kind of was able to start getting clients. And I tell people, listen, shout through the rooftops of what you're best at. I think what sometimes, though, that I find in our industry is that people still struggle within, I want to say a niche, but even just a focus of what they love and what they're good at. And so I think that when, like for you, you identified the law industry as something you were passionate about, something you really enjoyed. And so you went after that. We know if you ask anybody, who's the, you know, who's the one who really loves the books with, with attorneys. And I'm like, Karen Schwartz all day. Like you, you just know that. And I think for those that are listening, if you haven't shouted from the rooftops, the thing that you're passionate about or that you love or that you're really good at, that may be holding you back. I think. What do you think about that? I agree totally. And one of the ways you do that is also by giving because Mm. I part, you know, there's lots of things, posts get put in lots of different areas. The products I support, there's, you know, users that will like, you know, one of the products I work with is time slips and there is Sage City, which people put questions in and I go in and I answer those questions. And a lot of times I'm giving away my advice for free, but if it's something fairly simple, I do. If it's something complex, I'll say, look, this is way too complex. Reach out to me and we can talk about how I can help you. But even if I'm giving advice away, people Mm -hmm. appreciate it and they come to realize when they have a situation that is too complex, oh, you're somebody I can call on. And even with other consultants, giving them advice and guidance, it comes back, whether directly or indirectly. And so I've always been willing to give give advice because other people have also given to me. And that's what I think is unique about our industry. I don't know how many other industries do that, like. I don't just say like share secrets about things. It's not, they're not like like they're secrets. It's just stuff that we figured out over time. Right. So, you know, I find that. So, so now shifting a little bit. So 
one of the things that we, or that I had kind of, you know, I researched Karen, of course, all the time. Um, but we talked about is that work-life balance and where you're at in your practice, right? So like you, like me, we're, we're fairly similar in that we're not, you know, we're not on the upward slope necessarily. I'm ready to go down the hill kind of in a little bit. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm happy to go on my boat once or twice a week and not be in my office. So tell me about where you're at with that right now. So that's something I have a really hard time for. My office is in the basement of my house, which is beautiful. It's a walkout basement um, with windows and doors. And, you know, it's a really nice area. I have a hard time stopping myself from working sometimes. If I, have, if I don't have anything going on on the weekend, I may come and sit down at my computer and start doing some work or I'll answer client emails and stuff like that, which I really should not do because it gives them the wrong message that I'm right. always going to be there. And I, you know, so, um, you know, but, um, and I, I'm better now about sometimes taking time off, although with COVID it's, you know, not been too exciting to go traveling <laughs> as much. Right. Um, but being a part of, for many years, I was kind of a solo. And so taking a long vacation was really hard because mm, um, yes. you were worried about what's going to happen with your clients and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'd had some people work for me on and off for years, but I decided I was better off not, without employees. I didn't want right. that work. Mm -hmm. um, but since I've been a part of 3545 Consulting, I have the backup and stuff. And so a few years ago, we actually did a 10-day trip to Israel. And all my clients survived. So it Everyone made me realize played. I can do this. And yes. so now I do, once we can do more regular traveling, do plan to, you know, kind of take regular vacations. But getting sure. myself to stop. And that's the other thing with COVID. You know, when we didn't have COVID, it was much more out in the evenings and during the weekends. And so I'd have a lot more going on. And so it was easier right. to not work. Now that I don't have as much of that going on, it's much harder for me to kind of tear myself away and say, right. okay, I'm going to go do, read a book. I'm going to work on a jigsaw right. puzzle. I'm going to do something. And I do do that, but I have a little bit of a tendency to stay too long at the computer. Yes. And I can appreciate that for sure. I have definitely found actually for <clears throat> myself since, since COVID has happened, you know, I was working, but I was it was kind of weird because, and, and with taxes, it's maybe a little bit different, but I felt like I didn't have people in my office all the time. I could focus a lot better because I was just pumping out tax returns. I mean, I it was just like, okay, let's just keep going. Let's go. But I didn't ever work that 50, 60, 80 hour work week that I historically had. And I feel like my time was managed better. Um, and I learned a little bit more about that so that this past tax season was a little bit better. But um so, so let me ask you this question then, Karen, what is, if you were to say, these are three, uh, let's, let's exclude travel for a hot second. Let's exclude, you know, going to Israel, which must've been an amazing trip and being able to do more of the traveling part, but let's cut the travel out. And let's say Karen's at home and that, and there's this passion you've had for the, for your whole life. Maybe like for me, it's sports. Like I want to watch sports. I want to go to sports, whatever. That's kind of my thing. What about you? What is what else would there is there anything else in there, Karen, that you would do yeah. locally? Um, so I I say I play at golf. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm not as good as I would like to be. So I'd probably like to spend more time playing golf. Sure. So that I could get better. Um Okay. And so, then I So when you golf, let's let's stick on golf for a hot yeah. second. I do want to hear about the other stuff. So for golf. Do you just go like once in a while, like a friend will invite you or you're just like, like, what's that look like? Yeah. So um, there is in Fairfield where I live, there is a par three golf course and there is a woman's league that plays at the par three golf course on Monday mornings. Okay. And so I go out during the season, which is not long enough in Connecticut. Yes. I go out on Monday mornings and I, I go out early and I play. So I'm usually back at my desk by nine or 10. Okay. Um, but I play nine holes on a par three course. Okay, that's fine. See, that's right. good. Right. All right. And I want, I'm glad to hear that you're doing, I was going to say to you, are you, did you join a league of some kind? So that's yes. awesome. That's, that's the league is what got me out playing regularly because I didn't know enough people that played to go out and play. And just be like, oh, hey, I want to go golfing. Right. Yeah. So right. it's more like you needed something to like kind of fill that gap of who else plays. Right. 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 So what else is Karen Schwartz passionate about? Um, 
I love Mahjong. Okay. I play Mahjong. And um, right now I play in the a couple of evenings, one or two evenings a week, depending. Sure. Um, but I have friends that play and were like, if you if you were available during the day, we, we want you in the game. But I don't want to take the time during the day. Sure. So is it just the drive? Like you're a, you're a hard worker. You're somebody, you know, you probably like like myself. I watched my dad. My dad was a hard worker. So I have a work ethic like my father. And it's like, you know, get things done, get things done. Is that what's keeping you at that computer? Is it a mental? Like, what is that? Because I feel like are we going to smack that out of you is what we got to do. <laughs> A part of it is knowing that there's things that need to be done and just saying, yeah. and well, you know, maybe I should just do it now. Yeah. And part of it is that there's nothing else pressing, pulling me out like in the evening. Right. So during the day, it would be easier for me to do other things. But during the day is mm. when the clients want to do things. So if it's stuff that involves clients, I kind of have to ha be available during the day. Which makes sense, which makes sense. So I'm just listening to you know, me, Karen. I'm a problem solver, just like you. We're both, that's why we're in this industry. But just trying to think of, okay, listen, what if you said, what if to start, you said, you know what, I'm going to go play Mahjong with these people, um, you know, one day a week. And this day is a day I never schedule client stuff. And that's, that's just how the rules go. Not that you're not working all day, but that you're saying, right. you know what, at 11 o'clock, I'm out of here for three hours. I'm going to play my Mahjong because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work at night. Cause like you said, there's not as much dragging us out at night these days. Right. Right. Except for the Red Sox tonight, of course, very important. <laughs> So, um, but you know, so I'm just sorry. I'm a Mets of, fan. That's I'm sorry. You're a Mets fan. Don't be sorry. To yeah, me. I know. I'm that's <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm totally just kidding. Yeah. We're just, I don't know what's happening with the Red Sox these days, but I love it. So, um, but yeah, so, so I'm just trying to think. So what other things? So you like Mahjong, you love golf, you love those two, or you like those two things you love. Well, you love Mahjong. Um, I'm just thinking of it, and I'm sure you've seen Heather Satterley, who's now out. Bought, not only is she riding horses, now she bought she a horse. Brought, yes, yes. Right. My daughter, if my daughter heard about that, she'd be so jealous. My daughter wants a horse so badly. Oh my god! Well, look how long it took to took Heather to get to that point. But yeah. Um, so I just like, and I know for myself, you know, I did the softball thing. I went out and coached softball during tax season, which everyone said I was a lunatic, and I am, and I'm totally willing to admit that. But um, just got to a point where I was like, I'm not going to wait until I retire to do things I love. You know, I'll work on a Saturday if I have to uh, in the off season, you know, when it's, when it's not tax season, I don't typically work on the weekends ever. I did this Saturday cause we have obviously extensions this week, but you know, just trying to find that passion that you want to do something. And then, you know what, nobody's telling, nobody's your boss. I mean, I understand that you're doing some consulting. I get that, but you're the boss of you, Karen, right? Right. Right. And, and just set some guidelines and say, hey, you yeah. know what? I want to start doing this once a week because at yeah. night I can work at night. I'm not doing anything else. I yep. might as well work. But, you know, just enjoy those times that you can have for yourself yeah. during the week. Yeah. I dare you. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of dare you. To well, I will try to do some of that. Yeah. Because, you know, it's one thing that, you know, obviously we, we all have this. I think we're all people pleasers in the accounting industry, really. We want to serve the client. We want to get that stuff done. And we know we're responsible for certain things and we've, we've got to get them done. But I just found that, you know, I'm willing to do go the extra mile at another point if I can do this thing that I really love. Right, willing, right. I think as I that. settle more into my, my this change that I've made in my relationship with 3545 and I see how I can balance some of that, I may be more, you know, going to say, okay, Every Friday, I'm going to take off the afternoon or every, you know, or whatever it yeah. is so that I can yeah. do something like that. Or during golf season, I'm going to take off an extra day to, you know, play golf, play more right. golf. Right. And I think that's great. I think that's what we, you know, we do work hard. We do sacrifice and have for a long time, Karen. I mean, we've been doing this for a while, right? Yeah. And, oh, and yeah. we have put those all day, all nights in, because maybe we were trying to figure out a problem for a client. I remember the days right. I would come get in bed and my husband's like, you, you know, I have my laptop with me and he'd be like, they stumped you again, huh? And I'm like, yeah, they stumped me on a QuickBooks question that I need to figure out. And this is, you know, these are the days before you could go to the, into a community. You know, this was like right. way long time ago when it was, we just had to figure stuff out on our own. There weren't all these big certifications and yeah. things like that. We just learned, we learned how to do stuff on our own 
um, which I think makes us awesome, by the way. Yep. yep. Um, well, one of the products that I work with, I remember way, way back, we used to have, um, oh God, chats. Um, what was it? Uh, comp, no, not CompuServe. Um, one of those really early instant mess instant messaging and we'd get on and we'd be you know with the really slow connection but we'd have chats where we would talk amongst each other and right. pass ideas so i got that embedded in me very early in my career yes. i think it was also easier for me to balance a little bit more when i had kids at home but now that's just my husband and i and he's yeah. doing stuff and i'm it's a lot easier to just kind of keep going at stuff because you don't have the interruptions as much absolutely i remember do you remember karen this one's fun do you remember when into it would like you'd volunteer for the week to answer community questions did you do you remember oh, yeah. that yes. I, yes I remember my whole goal my whole thing was whenever they said okay brolin it's your week or whatever i was like who has the most responses? And I would want to beat that number. That was like my whole thing. It was like, I want to be number one for the number of responses. Hopefully they were right, but it just wanted to be the one who had the most responses. And I would skip over the really hard ones and go, just go to the easy ones, you know, fire them out. Right. Those were fun days. Right. Right. Those were fun days. Well, that's um, the nice thing about participating in like chat groups and stuff where you can respond. If there's a question you don't know the answer to, you just skip it. Just keep going. The ones you know, you can reply and you look really smart. Yep, absolutely. I yeah, I've been in in the face some of the Facebook groups and just in there chumping in some, you know, answers or asking some questions that I ask, you know, whatever. And um the resources now are just unlike we ever had, you know, when oh, we yeah. were first getting through this group. Google but, is wonderful. I search for things in Google all the time and uh absolutely I, I Tracy bought me a little sign for my desk says I D K Google it. Like I don't know, Google it. Like if I have to look it up, and I, if I look it up on Google, somebody asks me a question, I'm like, you know what, I just want to be sure I, I'm answering this right. And I Google it and I find it, I send them the link and hoping that they'll be like, oh, all she did was Google it. Like, you couldn't have Googled it, man? Like, come on. Yep, yep. Yeah, so, my daughter this morning had it texted me and said, how do I do a print screen? Well, she has a Mac. I don't have a Mac. I don't know how to do it. For, it I went into Google, I Googled it, I texted her, I said, here's what Google says. Seriously, like, come on, man, you guys got the most, you're, that age group, you've got the most resources at your fingertips than ever, we ever did. Right. Come on, Google it, people. It's yep, like, yep. so yeah. funny. I think back on my mom with her spreadsheet, you know, with her paper spreadsheets and stuff, she would have loved things like Excel and Quicken. Oh. It would have, it would have given her so much more free time because I remember oh. her sitting with the calculator, adding up the numbers. And, you know, she always had the paper tape going because if the number didn't ba numbers didn't balance, figure why. where did I goof? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still love doing that, too, by the way. Sometimes just, you know, using that. I love that little calculator with the tape. It's so fun. My daughter loves it, too. She's like, Mom, do you have anything for me to add? I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> right here. Oh, there it is. Right here. There it is. Oh, my goodness. I do love it. Well, listen, we, we try to keep these to about 20 minutes or so, Karen. You've been amazing. Um you know, love, love to hear the stories about, you didn't know that about your parents. That's kind of a cool little fun fact for me um, to get to know you a little bit better as always, but I really appreciate you. I know there's a lot of people out there, Karen, as you have spoken at Scaling New Heights and QB Connect and the presentations that you do and the training that you do and the teaching, I know there's people out there that you have positively affected their life. And that's what, you know, the, the designated motivator concept and characteristics are all about. And so you are definitely one of them, if you didn't know that. I just wanted well, you to know you definitely that. are. You're, and you're thank a great you. friend. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity to be on today, but also for your friendship and all the yeah. things you do for the community as well, because it's it's just so cool being part knowing you. Hey, same here, Karen. You're 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 a great friend, and I do appreciate you. So everybody, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the DM Disruption. One of my favorite people, Karen Schwartz. Love her. We're both in Connecticut. It's a beautiful day today. You should be golfing today, Karen. Did you golf this morning? <laughs> No, I did not. All right. We need to pick another day this week. Get out there and golf because it's going to be a nice week. All right. <laughs> okay. Thanks again, Karen. And everybody, we'll talk to you next time on the Designated Motivator DM Disruption Podcast. Thank you so much.